prayer, which is a little reminder about tomorrow's feast day we celebrate, the Epiphany. And it's by Joyce Rupp, her book, Out of the Ordinary. You know her, she just has fresh images and approaches. Radiant One, every day is an epiphany in which I too can pay you homage. Every day I can kneel before you and open the treasure chest of my life. In there, I find unending gifts of every kind to offer you. Every day I bring my gratitude for you, my desire to grow more loving, my longing to be true. Every day I reach into that chest and offer my trust that you are near, my hope for all you promise, my belief in what is unseen. Bestower of gifts, thank you for all that my treasure chest of life holds. I will look daily for my persistent star of recognition. May it stand boldly over the house of my heart where you dwell, so that I will be aware of your presence and pause to give you homage. Amen? Amen. Isn't that beautiful? Yes. Think of the treasure chest of your life, all the gifts God has given you, and how we're meant to open it and offer those to the newborn king. My name is Sister Kathleen Bryant. I'm a religious sister of charity. And how many don't know me, so I can skip the introduction? Who does not know me? Okay. <laughs> I, I'm a religious sister of charity, and I love the people of Reno. I love the church of Reno. Every time I come here, I just find the most down-to-earth, real, authentic people. It's always a joy to be here. My background is as a teacher, a missionary to Africa, um, spiritual director. I was a vocation director for the Archdiocese of Los Angeles for 21 years. And since no one, young adult really understood what a vocation director was, I always put in my business cards a talent scout for God. <laughs> okay, I did that, and then eight years ago I, I finished that. I'm in leadership in my own community. That keeps me busy. But I'm also on our international human trafficking team. I do a lot of human trafficking ministry. And my other ministry is spirituality. So I give a lot of retreats and parish missions and workshops and all of that. So God keeps me busy, really. And I love this topic we're going to study this morning and practice. Now, practice is the best way. Because I did receive a grant several years ago from the Louisville Institute in Kentucky. It's a Presbyterian seminary. And the grant that I applied for was to study the effects of technology on our ability to reflect, to relate, to be still. And I went around and I, I read and I researched, but I also interviewed professional contemplatives like Trappists, monks, nuns, um, and to see are they noticing, as I was to be honest, the effects of technology on our ability to be still and to do nothing and to reflect deeply. So to this morning what I'd like to do is share some exercises with you that might help you to be still and to find ways to access this presence of God that's around us 24-7. It's always with us and always available. But exercises that I found helpful to stop my monkey brain. Do any of you know what monkey brain is? <laughs> you try to pray and you get quiet and you're, you're asking the Holy Spirit to be with you. Next thing you know, your mind has jumped to another branch. You're thinking of what you're going to do next as soon as you stop praying and then you come back to the candle flame or whatever's there. And next thing, your mind jumps here. They call it monkey brain. That our thoughts are very diverted to different branches of the tree of our life. And it's very hard to kind of access that meditation moment. Now, in our Catholic Church, what is wonderful is that we have a rich tradition of meditation and contemplation, going back thousands of years. And our model is Jesus who took time out of his busy preaching and healing ministry to go to the beach, just to sit on the shore, 
or to go to the mountains or out to the desert just to be immersed in nature and be alone with God, his Father, and just to be and reassess and just to listen to how the Spirit was moving him. We all need to do that. If Jesus needed to do it, God help us. We all need to do it. And we need to do it even more. It's good to say prayers. It's wonderful to receive the sacraments. But that's not enough if you want to be a whole human being. We need still, quiet moments. And we have to aggressively carve out quality time with God, or it will never happen. People tell me, I'm too busy. You know, I do spiritual direction. Oh, I'm so busy. I said, I bet you're uh, not too busy to take that next cell phone call you get. I bet you're not too busy to have a cup of coffee with somebody that you really want to enjoy. It's true for all of us. But we have to, in this day and age, be aggressively safeguarding that time that we all need to be healthy and whole human beings. And that means time of quiet and stillness where we're not distracted by the next incoming text message, or ping, or boom, or chime, or whatever it is. Okay, so are you with me on that? So that's where I'm coming from. And I even know myself, I've watched myself over the last few years, how my brain has changed with that, and how my attention span has changed, and I don't want to give that up. And if you look at it's not only small children, you see and I'm a senior. You see seniors crossing the street text messaging on the cell phone. <laughs> you know, you see married couples in restaurants not talking to each other. They're both texting on their cell phone. So I, I'm not blaming any younger generation. And I love technology. I absolutely love it. And it's here to stay. But how are we going to carve out spaces where we can relate to other human beings, look them in the eye while we're having a nice meal and talk to them and be present to them? without saying checking the next ping because that means you're not as important as the next person that just came from you. So how do we do that? And God is all around us. People know me. I always say if Jesus lived now, he would say, the kingdom of heaven is like free Wi-Fi. <laughs> it's, it's all around you. Can you see the Wi-Fi in this room? No. But if you logged in, and we logged in through baptism, then it's available 24-7, even though we can't see it. And Jesus used to get frustrated that people didn't realize, it's right here, it's right now. You don't have to wait till you die and go to heaven. No, the love of God, the grace in Ephesians, it says we have been blessed with every single spiritual blessing there is in Christ. Wow. Meditate on that for a moment. Every single spiritual blessing in the heavens is ours through Jesus Christ. And it's available to us. But we're so busy. We forget. It's like free life all around us. Okay? So I wanted to begin. I reread your synod book. I was so impressed by that synod that you had here in Reno and the directions that your bishop and your people. Um, oh, that's kind of cute. <laughs> Isn't that I get a little light show instead of switching the next thing? Okay. That's a little bit high, isn't it? Here are some of the synod directions that you voted on or came to consensus about that relate to our workshop this morning. And 